We attempted to do this live on YouTube, but I don't know how to do it. It didn't work. So we're just going to put it out here as a barely edited hangout. We're discussing the news story of the meteorite hitting a house, catching it on fire. Topher, take it away. All right. Hey, guys. We, I know we meet every single week, and this is a, not a recorded hangout, but I figured we'd just record a quick session on this uh, news story that's just blowing up right now. So as you can see, there is a fireball over Northern California reported to the American Meteor, Meteor Society, and it was viewed from three different states, 110 reports, and this is kind of where they saw it. And there was a few videos that were associated with it. And this one is from uh, Derek Schnell. This one looks like the meteorite makes contact with the ground super low. Looks like it almost fell right on the ground. Well, the driver who was, I believe the, the driver and passenger who were, who were tracking this, they saw that, they kept driving. <clears throat> kept driving and later came across a man's house that was on fire and associated the two together. It's quiet here in this secluded area. So this is area being the... reported on a bunch of a, news smell, um, uh, stations where nothing and happens. heard a big we're bang, discuss it today. started to smell smoke and I went onto my porch and it was completely engulfed in flames. Until Friday night. Wide open spaces, this was out on kind of a farm cattle ranch area. And yeah, not much around it. It appears this bright ball of light, which lit up the dark Northern California sky around 730, landed in the middle of nowhere. But what do you think hit, hit your house? They said it was a meteor. I've, I've always watched meteor showers and stuff as a kid, but. Okay, so I, uh, we're, yeah. we're gonna stop that there. And I have one more video before we can discuss this. This is the act, this is another angle of the same fall. Notice the height now. <laughs> well above, well above where the other one appeared to. Okay, so now that we've seen that, I want to ask the entire crew to please let's discuss this and what we think of this being a valid news story. You know, if you looked at the first video carefully, you actually see the uh, firewall go in and out above the clouds there too but because the guy's winding around the, the the hills you know you really can't tell where it's going and i think that's what where the confusion comes from um you know from from that vantage point you know in a second or two of driving you you might be hey that's right over there and you know when i think um the ams page says that it's like i've, I've heard anywhere from 50 to 100 miles away from where the track actually was yeah, 100, 170 miles away, um, the, the, the radar reports actually put the meteorite, if it did fall on the ground, uh, 170 miles away from the spire. But there, there's a lot of people who think that meteorites will fall on your house and catch fire. And I want to just throw some science out there. We have the weekly knowledge bolide. And so let's let's throw a bolide of information out there. Does anyone want to discuss or know how, how fast a meteorite's coming, what the outside temperature is, what the inside temperature is, dark flight, ablation? Let's discuss this, guys. <laughs> um, I wanted to point out uh, um, one fact that I know. Um, when a meteor is entering the atmosphere, it's coming in and hitting a brick wall of air, basically, and the air is getting thicker and thicker, and it's causing a lot of up, a build up pressure in front of it, and that's what causes the heat. Now, that heat on the outside of the meteor uh, reaches temperatures up to about 1600 degrees. And one of the ways the energy is uh, of that of that meteor hitting the air, that energy is is shown is with this bright light. So a lot of the energy is going towards the light. A lot of the energy is going towards the heat, and it melts the outside of the rock, and the rock is now flying off, burning, and that's what you, you see during the ablated flight, that big tail. So that's my small fact. I can continue, but I see Smiley has his hand up. I'm back. I blame Hollywood. I got a couple images behind me of meteorite strikes in popular movies. This is not reality. 
I don't know how many times we've seen hammer strikes with houses and whatnot, and it busts through your, you know, your attic and whatever, and lands on your bed like it did in BC Canada here not that long ago, and it didn't burn the house down. So I blame Hollywood and uh, the populist imagination of fireballs and things blowing up. So nice. Thank you. <laughs> Getty, what do you got for us, man? All right. So I unfortunately am still at work, so I can't turn my camera on. Understandable. But- One of the big questions that you have to ask is, is this thing still, does it have any potential to be on fire or hot enough that when it contacts any material, it can spontaneously ignite it? So first thought is the temperature of space. And the temperature of space is going to be the temperature of the rock as it's traveling through space. And that is 2.7 Kelvin, which is minus 270 Celsius, minus 455 Fahrenheit. So the entire... uh, meteoroid is going to be that temperature, negative 455 Fahrenheit, until it gets into the atmosphere where we see it burns at, what did you say, um, 1,400 degrees? 1,600 degrees on the outside. 1,600 on the outside for seven seconds, maybe 10 seconds for some of the bigger ones, or maybe a little bit longer for things like Chelyabinsk. I think that was maybe 20 seconds, but it's a very brief period of time relative to, you know, it being able to heat up the entire stone it just doesn't have that much capacity to be able to do that Mm -hmm. um another thing if you look back at the video that was put out about surface features the discussions about fusion crust show you how thin the layer is that actually gets ablated gets melted and then becomes fusion crust we're talking you know millimeters at most but the rest of that stone is not melted it's not ablated so it's still sitting at approximately negative negative 455 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to cool the outside of the stone very rapidly. In addition, right, so this is showing basically the meteorite light curve where it's giving off light versus or meteor light curve versus entry velocity. As you can see, the higher up or the the faster that it's going, so at 55 kilometers per second uh, versus, you know, let's say 15 kilometers per second, it actually starts ablating at higher altitudes. But you can see even the slower moving ones, 15 kilometers per second, they stop ablating at over 60 kilometers above the earth. Hmm. And so if you then look at elevation versus temperature, if we're looking 60 kilometers, all right, the temperature there is about 270 Kelvin. That's about room temperature. But as it continues to fall, as it's going through these, you know, 30,000 kilometers, 20,000 kilometers, 10,000 kilometers. Now you're looking at 225 Kelvin, which is about minus 50 Celsius, minus 50 Fahrenheit. So this thin little layer is now spending time falling through these frigid temperatures as well. So the inside is negative 455 Fahrenheit. The outside is negative 50 Fahrenheit. It's just not going to have enough heat left in it to set anything on fire when it gets back to the ground. Wow, that's awesome. I really appreciate you sharing that science with us and, and talking us through that. I, I do want to mention and and uh, the possibility of it of a meteor hitting being a meteorite and causing a fire by the heat of the meteorite alone, we've pretty much debunked that. But as someone brought up earlier, what if before we started what if it hits something that caused a fire whenever there's earthquakes we have a lot of things moving around and we get fires in houses so anyone want to talk about the possibility of not this meteorite but any other meteorite causing a fire by the time it actually hits an object which is very rare in itself unless it hits a gas line in my opinion it's it's not going to cause ignition in, in a, in a yeah. house That'll cause a fire. I see. I see Allison nodding along with her hand up. Is that what you were going to say? Um, not quite. Can we oh. watch the? Can we watch the very end of that second video again? Yeah. The very absolutely. End. I do believe the reporter shows him the video of the falling stone, and I want to point something out. Um, in addition to it hitting a. Um, gas line it could also go through a you know a breaker box on the on someone's house there's mm-hmm. definitely enough current and power and energy there that that a house could be destroyed i i agree 
And that, I'd be really another, curious to see what the fire chief says after they finish their invest, investigation. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, if that thing survived yeah. the little trip through the atmosphere, it's not going to get lost in a house fire. You'll find that stone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, at, at this point in the video, I, I do want to say that we're not cold and uncaring people. I'm, I feel very bad for this gentleman who lost his house, his vehicle, and also a dog in this fire. So I don't want to make light of his tragedy, but I do want to just share science because this is kind of going viral out there. Mm -hmm. So I think, Allison, okay. this is what you wanted to see. So yes, on, you can talk. I'm talking about it. Oh, wow. As the man holds his cigarette, yeah, I have like a flame and basketball coming out of the meteorite to his ashtray. <laughs> I just wonder if that's a more likely cause for this fire is a cigarette smoking accident watch the video for the rather than a yeah uh, I'll be honest with you um more more flaming ball of of fire from wow. space or a discarded cigarette so again I'll be very curious to see what the fire it, chief says so what's the cause for this fire yeah. And that that's the problem. They're, they're seeing this this meteor on fire for that very short period of time and associating it with a, with a rock falling from the sky that's on fire. And that is not the case. And that is the problem that a lot of people have with these fireballs. They think they're hitting the ground on fire, and it's not. It's mm -hmm. never and the case. I think it's an unfortunate coincidence more likely than then try to explain how else that happened. So, mm -hmm. uh, right, it could have hit a breaker box. It could have hit a gas line. It could have hit an ashtray. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, there, but the reality is the trajectory put it 100 and, 170 miles away from yeah. where, where this fire yeah. was. So that's not even a possibility. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing we're doing a little bit of injustice to uh, we wanted to put a nice video out there to talk about this. We want to talk about it ourselves because it's a great story. But uh, for those of you who have ever seen uh, Scott Manley on YouTube, you need to subscribe to him and fly safe. Uh, he did a great video about this and, and you get you should really watch it. There's a lot of science in it and Smiley with his hand up. You know, back in uh, 2010 in uh, Prince Edward Island in Canada here, there's something similar as far as a farmer sitting watching a fireball hit his field and uh, started a fire. And after the fire marshal investigated and had the university take a look, because again, they thought it was maybe a meteorite that started it. They come to the conclusion it was either firecrackers or, or fireworks that were set off that landed in his fields. So... Mm -hmm. there, again, there are there are other cases where this has happened in the past, and the news media has picked up on it. So nice, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Uh, Art. What you got, bud? Yeah. Well, in 2013, we knew of Chelyabinsk in Russia that was incoming at 95,000 miles an hour on a low trajectory, and that thing came apart. And I don't recall any fire damage. But it was a lot of broken glass. Mm -hmm. I was going. I was going to ask. It's like the, the the amount of debris that of, of meteors meteorites that came down. I'm sure people picked them up pretty quickly afterwards, mm -hmm. and I don't remember hearing any. You know, them being burning hot or anything. Well, there are pictures that I've seen where the hunters go out to collect the Chelyabinsk meteorite that we're talking about heat of meteorites as they directly land. They've fallen into the snow and they, what you see is a, a field with a couple of holes poked in it. So you walk over to those holes, take the sand or take the snow away from the top and dig around the bottom. What you leave is a podium with a Chelyabinsk meteorite sitting on top of the snow. So it fell through the snow, but didn't have enough heat to melt the snow and land to the ground. It literally stayed on that snow and was only found because they walked out in the field and saw these little holes poked in them and realized the rock didn't even fall all the way to the ground. So that, I, I think, totally debunks the entire meteorite on fire at sea level. The difference between a meteorite like Chelyabinsk coming in at, a, at an angle and burning for 17 seconds versus a 
an iron, let's say, worst case scenario, punching straight down. The difference is in chili beans, you had 17 seconds for all that energy to be dissipated and, and, and fragmenting the rock. Um, when something comes straight down and, and it doesn't have a, a long, flat ablation, the energy is released like a car crash more instantaneously um, than a, a long trajectory. So that's that's kind of how it's the amount the amount of energy is there. Just how is it dissipated? How long of a time does it have to uh, to to affect Allison? And a crater creator enters our atmosphere approximately once every two thousand years. <laughs> That was not the event we witnessed on that video. So go watch our Crater Creators video and learn more about those magnificent events. But yeah. that's not what we saw hit the man's house. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I, I Oh, Smiley with his hand up. I guess, I don't know, from a science standpoint, I'm struggling too, because even, even with a large enough asteroid hitting the earth, like unless you're hitting a natural gas line, you need three things to cause fire, right? You need oxygen, you need an ignition source, and you need something that burns, right? And the thing is with the meteorite creating a crater, I mean, it's no different than a nuclear blast. You're basically displacing air, right? So you're displacing the atmosphere. So you're losing your ignition source there. You're creating a dust cloud, which also basically loses anything that can burn. So again, unless you're, you're hitting a natural gas pipeline direct and then causing some other form of you know um secondary explosion or whatnot there i i still struggle with it um but we, when we were uh viewing that news story earlier uh it made me think of other times that we have watched videos or had um you know raw hunters send us links to their news stories and i have been surprised at the number of times that news channels have given like credence to some of these stories and they are completely way off like scientifically um i mean we've had someone before had a room full of river rocks and he's like these are meteorites i know i was on the news and i'm like oh, that doesn't mean anything really uh, but i think that they spread a lot of misinformation about how meteorites really work so people should definitely pay attention to people like you guys the scientific people that actually know the real information well, we meet we meet every single week and discuss meteorites and the science behind them. If you'd like to join us anytime, feel free. The information's on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook channel. You basically have to go out of your way to avoid it. So thanks a lot for joining us and we'll catch you next week, guys.